Okay, so I am back for 11.2. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm uploading everything by the time you need it. So this week I am uploading 11.1 .1 and 11.2. Next week I'll work on these three sections. The following week I'll work on these um, and so on and so forth, except for the exception of 12.5 and the review. I will most likely cover those the week before. Um, but if all else fails, you will have this information um, by the time you get to Tuesday the 8th, okay? Um, but just little by little, I'm going to keep working on them. I thought I had previous lectures from another course recorded, but apparently I did not. I, apparently I have only taught this class um, face to face. And so this is the first time that I am teaching this class um, online. And so I'm trying to make the most of um, your time and my time, of course. Um, but to record the entire lecture would take um, like an hour and then to cover the examples will probably take another 30 minutes to an hour. So to kind of compensate for that amount of time, um, I prefer that you guys go through these um, slides just to gather the information and then come and watch the um, videos where I work out the examples, okay? So for the first um, problem, this section is 11.2, which is vectors in the, um, not in the plane. Vectors in the plane is in two dimension. This is vectors in space, which is in three dimensions, okay? So it's a little bit more difficult to graph and such, but um, the mechanics of it is not very different than it was in two dimensions, okay? So for part A, it wants us to plot these points. Remember, these are X, Y, and Z. Um, Z is usually going up, so notice they have the X coordinates here, the Y coordinates there, and then the Z coordinates there. So I'm actually going to draw that coordinate system just so we can get an idea of where our points are. And I usually like to draw this dotted. So I only draw the positive axes solid and then the negative axes um, dotted. So for five, three, four. That would mean a five X value, then a three Y value. And those two would meet about right here. And then it needs to go up in the positive four direction. So one, two, three, four, it's probably somewhere up here. Really it's in this quadrant, but it's up four units, okay? So, um, let's look at this one. This one looks like it's over four, or maybe not necessarily. And then it should only be in the y direction three. So the point should be here and then going up four units. So let's keep looking at these other options. Here, that one looks a little bit more realistic. So four and then three, that is about right here. And then it's going up four units. So I'm guessing that it's this option. Let's go look at the other problem. So the other one, part B, is negative six, two, and one. So on my paper, that would be negative six and the X value would be one, two, three, four, five, six. And then positive two would put it here in this quadrant, but then it does need to go up one unit. And so the point is, there. And that does fit this description. It's at negative six. Um, and then two units over, there's the base of it. And then it is lifted up about one unit. Okay. So it is going to be this option here. Now let's do the same thing, but for number two. So I'm actually going to come over here to this space and I'm going to do the same thing again. My X, my Y, and then do a dotted line for the negative axes. There we go. So here I have the points um, 0, 6, and negative 9. So no x coordinate direction. So I'm here still in the origin. Then positive 6 units out. So here's the base. But then I've got to go down 9 because the z value is negative. 
So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way to the points here. So it is in, it's on this y axis, but it's like directly below the, I'm sorry, this is the y axis. So it's on the y axis. And it's not actually on the y axis, it's below the y axis, nine units. Okay. And so, so far here, you've got six and down. So this is a potential option. Um, here, this one did it, but it went, um, the dotted lines are going up. And for some reason, I have the dot here. That's not correct. Um, and this one could be it. And this one is on the x axis as if the x coordinate were six. So, but the y coordinate was six. So this is not it either. So we're potentially up to these two options. So let's go see if the second point will outrule one of those two options. So now the x coordinate is positive six. One, two, three, four, five, six. The y coordinate is zero. So the base of it is here. But then because the z coordinate is positive nine, it should go up nine units. So it, the point lies directly above the x axis, just nine units. So this one does look about right. Let's go look at the other one. The other one is in the negative x value direction, but our x coordinate was not negative, okay? So it is definitely going to be this option. Now let's see what this one says. It says, find the coordinates of the point. It says the point is located four units in front of the YZ plane. So this is the YZ plane. Okay. So, and then you have, of course, the negative um, Y values as well. And so then all of this is the YZ plane. It's just like a big sheet on the y axis. Okay. Um, and so what we're saying is that it's four units in front of that. So that would put me on the positive x axis. So I already know that the x coordinate is going to be a positive four. Then it says it's two units to the left of the x z plane. Well, this is the x axis, this is the z axis. So if I'm in front of the X, Z plane, that would be this plane here. And if I'm in front of it, or no, it says I'm to the left of it. So that would put me back here. And if it's two units to the left of that, that would mean that my Y coordinate is going to be negative two. And then finally, we have one unit below the X, Y plane. So this is the x, y plane, right? This whole thing, because this is the x coordinate and the y coordinate. And so if I'm below that, that means my z value is negative. And I think it said I was one unit below that, yes. So that means I'm gonna have a negative z value. Here's the easiest way you can tell. If it's saying in front of a y, z plane, that means you're gonna have a positive X coordinate. Okay, if it says behind the YZ plane, that means you're gonna have a negative X coordinate. Then if it says it's to the right of the uh, XZ plane, that means you have a positive Y coordinate. And if you're to the left of the X, Z plane, that means you'll have a negative Y coordinate. Um, and if it is to, or I'm sorry, above, the x y plane then you have a positive z coordinate and if it's below the y x y plane 
you have a negative z coordinate. So this is just some typical rules that helps um, to get these coordinates. So four comma negative two comma negative one. Um, it says what number four says what is the z coordinate of any point in the x y plane? So if you're on the x y plane, that means you're on this plane here. This is the x and this is the y. So imagine that this cross is on a sheet of paper and that sheet of paper is lying on top of the X and Y um, axes. When that happens, um, the Z value on top of the X, Y axes will be zero because it's right there in the center of that Z um, axes. So there, I can't really write anything for number four. Um, for number five, it says um, z equal to negative three is a point on the plane parallel to the, no, it wouldn't be parallel to the z plane because it it is in the z plane. So it would probably either be this xy plane or this xy plane, okay? Um, but because it's a negative three, it will most likely be above the xy plane versus being below the xy plane. So we've got here it's below and over here you have above. And since I'm negative three, that means I would be below the xy plane. Now here it's saying x is greater than zero. So then it should not have an x plane at all. It should be with respect to the y, z plane, okay? The variable that's missing should be this variable here, x. So I'm gonna be either one of these two. And since my x value is greater than zero, um, remember when you have a positive x coordinate, it means you're in front of the y, z plane. So that means I'm gonna select the one that I accidentally selected. <laughs> um, here, the same thing, my z value is negative, right? Z value is negative, so I am below the XY plane. Now here it asked me to find the distance, so I am going to do number five on paper, and that one I'm going to follow the distance formula, which means I need to take the difference of one X coordinate minus the other X coordinate and square it, plus Y coordinate minus the other Y coordinate, square it, and finally, the z coordinate minus the other z coordinate and square it. So I end up with um, 2 squared plus negative 3 squared plus um, 6 squared. So that's 4 plus 9 plus 36, which is the square root of 49, which is just a seven units. So then I do know that the distance between those two points is seven units. Now here it says the triangle with these vertices is translated seven units to the right along the y axis. Um, determine the coordinates of the translated triangle. Okay. Give your vertices in the same order as the original vertices. So essentially I need to translate this one and put it in this box, then translate the middle one, put it in the middle box, and then translate the last uh, point and then put it in the last box, okay? So if I'm translating it to the right along the y-axis, that means um, that the y-coordinates will instead of being here will be moved over. So I'm actually going to have to add 7 to all of these y coordinates. So 5 plus 7 is going to be 12. Then 8 plus 7 is 15. And then finally, 7 plus 7 is 14. Notice that the x coordinates and the y coordinates stay exactly the same. Now for... Um, Oh, that was number seven. Okay, number eight. 
I didn't write anything down, but all we did was add the seven units to the y coordinates. Now, number nine says find the coordinates of the midpoint. So number nine, we need to find that midpoint. So essentially what you're doing is you're taking the x coordinates and finding their average. And then the y coordinates finding their average and then the z coordinates and finding their average. So I end up eight over two, which is four, six over two, which is three, and then 16 over two, which is eight. And so then this would be the new, the midpoint uh, coordinates. All right. Okay, now we're starting to get into those vectors, right? So now that we've kind of wrapped our brain around three-dimensional space, um, we're going to start talking about these vectors. So we do have the coordinates of the two vectors. I'm going to switch my paper and write the coordinates of the terminal point, the initial point and the terminal point. So the initial point is zero, three, five, and the terminal point is three, five, nine. So if I wanna know what the vector looks like in component form, I'm going to take the terminal X minus the initial X, the terminal Y minus the initial Y, and the terminal Z minus the initial Z. And I get three, two, and four. So that's going to be the component form of this vector. So then write the vector um, in the standard unit vectors would be three i plus two j plus four k now that we have three dimensional space. And then it would be, this would be the new terminal point if it were in the um, standard position, right? So it would start at the origin and then it would end at three, two, four. So that would make three for X, two for Y, and then it would go up four units. So this is definitely not it. This one's on the axis. So that one did not go up four units. And this one, Hmm, something's going on here. Maybe it is one of these. I don't seem to be getting either of these things. And it seems like they changed the direction of it. Oh no. It's because I wrote these coordinates wrong. See, I have another error. I had an error in the last video. So I wrote those coordinates incorrectly. Those coordinates should have been three, five, and zero. Then that means I would have done three minus three, five minus five, and then nine minus zero. And so then my vector actually would have been zero, zero and nine. That makes sense now. So that would explain why I wasn't able to find this as my answer. And we don't need to write zero I and zero J. We can just write nine K. And then finally, if it's nine K, that means it would have this coordinates. So it should start at the origin and then go up to nine. So the graph would be this one. Okay, let's try number 11. So it does want the component form. So I'm going to do the terminal X value minus the initial X value, then the terminal Y minus the initial Y, and the terminal Z value minus the initial Z value. And so I end up with one, negative seven, and two, okay? And so then if I wanna find the magnitude of that, I'm essentially doing one squared plus negative seven squared 
plus two squared, which is the square root of 54. And I wanna see if the square root of 54 will reduce. It does to three square root of six. And then if I wanna know the unit vector, that would be one, negative seven, two over its magnitude, three square root of six. So one over three square root of six, negative seven over three square root of six, and then two over three square root of six. Since I cannot reduce any of the numbers outside of the radical, I am going to leave this as my answer here. So vectors, symbols, one comma negative seven comma two. And then here we're gonna type in three square root of six. And then here we're gonna type in our vectors and then go back to operations and type in fractions. So one over three square root of six, go to the side, get a comma, another fraction, negative seven over three square root of six, go to the side, comma, fraction two over three square root of six. And there we go, we've got that in there. Now number 12, um, we're seeing that we have u equal to seven, two, three. V is equal to two, two, and negative one. And W is equal to four, zero, negative four. And so they want us to find this new vector, which is a composition of these three vectors. So we are gonna use our order of operations here. So let me fill in each vector according to these operations. And according to the order of operations, you must do multiplication first. So we're still gonna have this vector. Minus this vector but then we're gonna add eight, zero, negative eight. Then according to the order of operations, you have to add or subtract left to right. So I'm essentially gonna put these two together first. So seven minus two is five, two minus two is zero, three minus a negative one is actually four. And then if I compute those, five plus eight is 13, zero plus zero is zero, and four and negative eight is negative four. And so I get that as my final um, answer here. Okay, now for the next one, very similar. I am not gonna write down what U, V, and W are. I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this in. And so it does want me to find Z. So I'm gonna say two times U plus V minus W plus three Z equals zero. Now this is a vector, so I did write that vector notation above it, okay? So let's again do our multiplication first. So I get 48, zero and 28. Then we're gonna go ahead and add these two together. So I get 55, two and then 21. And then I'm going to combine these two. Okay, and then typically what you do when you're solving equations like this 
is you would move your constants over to one side and then divide by this um, coefficient over here. But if I do subtract this vector from both sides, um, notice, I'm not sure if you noticed, but this zero should be bolded because when you add and subtract a bunch of vectors together, you're going to get a vector, not a scalar. So this zero should be a vector. And so it should have that symbol over it, okay? Now, instead of writing the zero vector in its vector notation, you can write the zero vector in its component notation. And so then these would cancel and I have three Z vector. And then zero minus 51 is negative 51. Zero minus a negative six is positive six. And zero minus 24 is negative 24. And then finally, you would divide both sides by three. And what does that mean for vectors? That means you would divide each component by three. I believe that's 17, but let me double check. Yes. So negative 17, two, and negative eight. That is what Z would need to be. Okay, so number 14, that one's pretty simple. It's just asking me for the magnitude. I think we've already done a problem with magnitude. So the magnitude of V would be the square root of one squared plus zero squared plus five squared, which is the square root of 26. And I do not believe the square root of 26 will simplify. Nope. So it's just going to say the square root of 26. Then now number 15, I won't answer, but you would watch the video and then you should be able to answer these two questions. And that is the exact same formula I used. So most likely the answer here is true, but watch the video in case there's any extra bits of information that you need from that video, okay? Um, but other than that, we are done with this assignment. So this video might've been a little bit shorter than the last one but I'm not real concerned about the timing or anything. I just wanna make sure that I give you examples of all the problems. And so I did submit it as a whole. And as you can tell, all the problems have been marked correct. So you do have um, the correct solutions here, okay? And that is it. I will see you next week.